Fin Study Club welcomes all viewers to this video. My name is Ankur Kusresht and I bring to you a very very important concept of bootstrapping which is part of CFA Level 2 Corporate Finance Module Reading 29 which is Mergers and Acquisition. Let us understand what do we mean by this complicated looking term bootstrapping. Now bootstrapping is actually a phenomena impacting the EPS. So basically in the bootstrapping we are going to track the movement of EPS and the scenario is that there is a company called A who is an acquirer who is uh, planning to acquire a company called T who is the target and in the process is trying to increase the EPS post merger compared to uh, the pre merger EPS. So while uh, you know there is an EPS of let's say X amount which the acquirer has and the acquirer has in mind that by combining with the firm called the target and more importantly without any operational efficiencies without any operational efficiency is super critical in the case of bootstrapping basically bootstrapping means that you are showing to the world that you have improved as a firm uh, after the merger uh, whereas the ground reality is that there is no operational efficiency as such so your bootstrapping is a question answered by saying that can the eps of the merged firm increase without any increase in the hard work or the ground work which is to speak without any synergy as such. It is a pure mathematical fundamental wherein the acquirer tries to show himself a little superior post the merger compared to his pre-merger situations. You just try and understand you know how does this fundamental work. So like I said the movement that needs to be tracked is of the EPS and the comparison is between the pre-merger EPS of the acquirer and the post-merger EPS of the merged entity. Now before moving to the actual maths of it, let's just spend 30 seconds on understanding what do we mean by the, uh, you know, this terminology PE multiple. Now PE multiple is actually a quantum jump. It's, a, it's, it's actually a, a you know, springboard sort of thing which is given by the investor community to the earnings of a particular Firm. So let's say while a P multiple of 8.1 will denote that for every $1 of earnings there is an 8 times jump that the stock price is expected to get. So to speak the actual earnings turn out to be uh, $2.5 getting the same multiple the investor community is expecting a share price to be $20. So a P multiple is basically the relationship uh, is, is a number is a perception which the investor community have as a relationship between the earnings and price of that individual company. Let us understand this P multiple from another perspective. If I am an investor and I want to enter this stock as a buyer then this 8 is to 1 is actually denoting that for every $8 of investment because I am going to buy my share at the price prevailing today for every $8 of investment I get access to just $1 of the EPS so to speak the reciprocal of P multiple actually denote my return on investment so is 12.5% which is to mean that if the P is Eight, that means the investors can expect to get a return on investment of about 12 and a half percent I know this is not a watertight or it's just not a pure uh, purely just fundamentalistic concept but it's still you know referred to uh, you know a, a, as a broad guideline to take a lot of decisions now let's just come back to the aspect of bootstrapping and now understand as to when will the bootstrapping happen the bootstrapping basically means the increase in the EPS of the merged entity in comparison to the pre-merger scenario. My first bullet says that a bootstrapping will happen that means the EPS will go up 
if a higher pe ratio firm will purchase a company with a lower pe therefore i can come at a simple relationship that for bootstrapping to happen that means for eps to go up the pe of the acquirer the pe of the acquirer has to be more than the pe of the acquirer has to be more than pe of the target so this is a simple rule that you know i have been able to arrive at of course i'm going to challenge this equation and you know refine that further on my forthcoming slide but let's just understand as to how does this you know uh, bootstrapping impact happens you know and, and can be expressed in terms of numbers so i'm going to clean the slate a bit and take an example which has already been put on the slide there is a company called a whose stock is operating at 50 dollars and the earning per share is 50 so you know the p multiple is coming out to be 25 in other words let me just rephrase my sentence there is a company who is earning two dollars a share and the investor community is giving them a multiple of 25 therefore resulting into the stock price of 50 and there is another company called t with 2.5 dollars remember it's a higher earning compared to the acquirer but it's not a favorite among investor community therefore you know the total stock price is trading just at 25 there is a size difference between the firms 1 lakh shares compared to 50,000 and accordingly the total earnings which is earning per share into the number of shares and total market cap which is the stock price multiplied by number of shares is accordingly 5 million and 1.25 million. Let's just understand and reproduce these figures for the merged entity and let's see what will happen in the merged entity. Now First, we need to understand that the acquirer will pay to the target by issuing new stocks. They will not make payment by, uh, you know, sharing the cash. So, the payment mode is by stock purchase and therefore, you will have to find out how many new shares are to be issued. Which is a simple formula, the total worth that has been acquired divided by the per unit share price of the pre-merger entity firm. So it is like saying I am purchasing someone worth 1.25 million by issuing a, a one unit of my stock which is valued at 50. So by doing a simple math I get a figure of 25,000 shares. So these are the new shares that are issued. In total to the old one the total number of shares are have now become 1,25,000 okay as I said that there is no operational efficiency there is no synergy at all so my total earnings is just a mathematical sum of the pre-merger earnings so there is absolutely no synergies you know overall by the merged entity so my new EPS which is the total earnings divided by total number of shares turns out to be by doing a quick match on the calculator it turns out to be 2.6 so you see that compared to two dollars my merged entity eps has increased to 2.6 there is a significant increase in the eps this is what is bootstrapping that without any change in the operational effectiveness your EPS has gone up just because you have been able to purchase the earnings of the target company cheaply. Let's just spend 10 seconds on this line. A P of 25 will mean that the acquirer will have to invest $25 to get access to $1 of earnings whereas to get 
access to one dollar of earning the acquirer just have to make a payment of ten dollars so therefore rather than investing in his own business the acquirer very smartly rather than you know expanding and investing into the own business has spent that twenty five dollars and actually been able to acquire two point five dollars of the earnings which is just two point five times so as a weighted result of that you know the earnings of the acquired entity goes up significantly so my p multiple is of the emerged form will be you know can be same or it might be different it will depend upon what is you know the stock price and the market cap but if the bootstrapping impact is less focusing upon the resultants market price it is more focusing upon the resultants eps so i get a very very important conclusion that greater the pre merger pe of the acquirer which is 25 and of course you know this is in relation to the pe of the target so greater the difference between the two there is more bootstrapping impact so you see that 2.6 versus 2 there is a significant delta of 0 0.6 which is almost like 30% and the dilution, there is no doubt that there has been some dilution. There are 25,000 new shares that have been issued and now there are total 1,25,000 shares. So because of this, 25,000 divided by 1,25, the new entity have got a new owner to the extent of 20%. So the existing owners of acquirer have only 80% stake now. So there is a dilution of 20% happening. Let's just understand this scenario and compare this with a condition that the PE of the target is very very high and what will happen to the bootstrapping impact and the dilution. What I mean by that, let me just clean the board a bit. What I mean by that, that your resultant figures how would they change and what is the relationship between the PE multiples and your bootstrapping impact so uh, I am taking a case where the PE multiple of the target is actually not 10 but 20 so I am here taking a case that it is actually 20 so to speak that the stock price is not 25 now the stock price is 2.5 multiplied by the PE is also 50 therefore the market cap is 50 into the total number of shares outstanding 50,000 is 2.5 million so basically by increasing the PE the pre-merger PE of the target all the fundamentals have changed in terms of the market price now let's just try and look at the question now how much is the worth of the target now the worth of the target has suddenly doubled and my acquirer stock price remains same therefore exactly double the number of shares will have to be issued so the new shares will be one lakh plus fifty thousand 150,000 and like I said there is no operational efficiency at all the total earnings remain at 3.25 so my 3.25 lakh divided by 1.5 lakh shares it is now no more coming as 2.6 it is gone down to 2.17 so I know it was a very very small reading but all the more it has been a fantastic session. I thank you very much to all the uh, listeners who have been very very patient and I hope that they have been able to understand the concept of bootstrapping effectively. This was Ankur Kulstresht. I look forward to speak to you in my other sessions. Greetings from Finn Study Club.